the highest incidence so, uh, is because of uh, several factors. The factors can be genetic, cultural, social, and uh, they can also be because of the urban migration. But let me, in short, if I want to tell you, the point actually happening is that uh, the incidence reaching up to 62 million in India, where we've got a population of more than 100 million, you can imagine it's almost reading endemic proportion. It's a very serious concern. And the basic reason we start from genetic, that's a, uh, not a very high percentage, but then cultural and familial. The, what is happening is our lifestyle has gone a tremendous change. The affluence has come in spite of poverty and those things which we are talking. But affluence has come and at least that has influenced that they don't do any physical exercises. They re prefer to have a sedentary life. The movement has almost become uh, very limited. They just go on vehicles or they sit down in the you know, public transports. So therefore what is happening is that the type of food which they are taking in our country, this is very rich in carbohydrates and uh, saturated fats. And uh, that leads to increase in weight. So obesity comes up in the big way and obesity is also becoming a concern. So that is an important thing that because of the lifestyle modifications which has, uh, which has occurred part of as an influence, and I will say, ki in spite of the fact that some people at a very small level are trying to make people aware about the diet pattern, physical activity, lifestyle changes, even religious people are talking about it. And uh, But still it is very limited and people are not much concerned and not still aware. So these things are very important. And then coming to a third point, which is urban migration. A lot of people are wishing to shift from uh, villages where you find incidence still is less. The reason for that is because they're doing physical activity, they are uh, having an uh, unpolluted atmosphere, and then they've got uh, a better you know, system of uh, physical activity. They have to do it. Now, coming to the urban migration part, this is leading to disaster because not only diabetes, on the same time, the hypertension and all the related things are happening in these people which could be avoided. And uh, we do believe that uh, the, ins the situation in our country, genetically we talk, nearly four times people are more prone to develop diabetes in comparison to Europeans. The genetic part is playing role much in type 1, which is usually detected in, in uh, kids or small children or undetected diabetes. But 92% are because of these factors which I have already enumerated, because of the poor lifestyle, lack of physical activity, obesity, all these factors are leading to high blood sugar level because the threshold is crossed because of the overweight and insulin becomes short. It's not, it's not effective and uh, whatever is produced actually, the body has got a resist, almost sort of you know, resistance to the use of that insulin and therefore 92% are type 2. What should be done is first is awareness. Awareness leads to knowledge and awareness has to occur right from the childhood. And the schools uh, should have proper medical persons who should teach them about the diet pattern, exercises and they should be practiced, not theory. So because in schools they can practice for you know physical training and all those things and running and all those things. Regarding the lunch or the breakfast or whatever the children are taking with them, this has to go to the mothers this has to go to the children. So this awareness program has to be very serious and implemented accordingly. In villages, people should be told, in urban areas, in offices, in you know institutions, everywhere we should have proper display that you should have physical activity, you should have a proper diet system. All those things are required. Once we do that, then you will find that what is happening. For example, uh, those people who are affluent, but they are being aware. Now they have taken a step. They are all going for morning walks. They are doing exercises. They have learned that the diabetes can be controlled because type 2 can be controlled by only these effects. Maybe that you do not require any drug. But why do we reduce the weight? So therefore, this has to be shown. And I have seen in my experience that whatever you talk theoretically, it is not going to you know, make much effort. The, the result will come when you show them. That means there should be Persons who can come and tell about their stories, you can still show that in our audio, video, all those things. Then you will find people are immediately impressed about it and they start following. Now, I will say like that, that the first and foremost is uncontrolled diabetes. One wrong notion in most of the diabetics is they are more confident. They feel, oh, it's all my control. 
you know, I've, I've taken the, many of them have taken glucometers also, electronic, and they, they keep on checking, not knowing much details about it, and then they have a false confidence. So I keep, keep on operating patients and find my diabetes is controlled. When I get them investigated, it is uncontrolled, and then we find a three months level detected by HB1EC levels shows that this is very high. And therefore, this is one thing, uncontrolled diabetes which leads to neuropathy, and neuropathy leads to the loss of sensations, and therefore, they can keep on getting injury, they get infection, and they get ulceration, trauma, even to the extent sometimes, you know, scorpions or rat can bite into the foot, patient person will not know. I am reminded of a person who was sitting on a motorbike, and he burned his, you know, heel by a silencer, and they were all talking with each other that the smell is coming from somewhere. So this is one important factor. And then as you uh, asked about the tobacco also, the important thing is that actually this uh, diabetes affects microvascular level and macrovascular level. Microvascular level will lead to neuropathy. It will lead to, you know, ophthalm retinopathy, ophthalmic problem, even blindness. And uh, this can lead to, to also the kidney disease and then neuro neuropathy means this uh, loss of sensation. And this macropathy, which is occurring, is in major vessels. It can be cardiac, it can be, you know, foot vessels or leg vessels. They lead to ultimately different types of disease where the gangrene can occur. And diabetic foot is one of the most important manifestations. And will you believe the commonest cause of diabetic per patient to be admitted in the hospital is diabetic foot. And nearly 60, 65,000 amputations are being done every year for diabetic problems in USA. In India, I don't know the figure because it's not, I don't think it's counted. It must be in lakhs. And therefore, small differences in approach to the treatment, control of diabetes has led to a major avoidance of major amputations. And uh, one interesting thing I will definitely tell that nearly four times the earth diameter we have to cross on an average in our lifetime. We have to walk that much. And uh, a person who's got a disease, a pain, or a loss of limb, you can imagine how will he cross that area. And then after amputation, the amputation also becomes commoner in un undetected diabetes or uncontrolled diabetes. And therefore, that becomes a very important issue. So in those patients being found, if you do a major amputation on one side, patient will not survive more than five years. He dies in between. And this is because this also indicates the cardiac disease, the coronary artery disease has become important by the time peripheral vessels show. So therefore, this is important. And tobacco control will give a major, you know, or I think a lift for the uh, progress of this you know, problem in control. The reason is because tobacco also leads to the narrowing the vessels. And diabetes and tobacco, they become going together and they become extremely lethal. And then the, what is happening is diabetes causes atherosclerosis, causes narrowing. It causes hypertension, then again narrowing. And then on the same time, tobacco also same thing is leading. And then inflammation of the vascular walls which occurs in, di in diabetics, especially those who are using tobacco. So therefore, tobacco is a very important hazard which should be ruled out. And they, these patients also are more prone to tuberculosis because tobacco patients are, who are using, they are more prone. And diabetics, if these three are combined together, the things become still more, you know, serious. The first and foremost is that exercise in those things should start from childhood. The training should occur from beginning. Everybody, even the father or grandfather, they should demonstrate that this is required. And they do it weight control. That means they should be in habit of taking a weight, weight uh, every month. Check it. And everybody should give an example that the weight control will be very important. And diet pattern, the less of carbohydrates and less of saturated fats and exercises, change in lifestyle will definitely lead to a reduction in, and control of this country. Problem. I told you about tuberculosis is one, which is very really important. Then hypertension is another. Hypertension leading to strokes and cerebral strokes and, you know, uh, even fatal accidents. And then uh, on the same time, it also, also leads to uh, difficulty in problems in pregnancy. Because overweight children are born and uh, they have got a higher tendency to develop diabetes itself. And the mother also suffers from the same thing. So therefore, it has got a lot of linkages with the many diseases. Actually, I will say in a way, if somebody is diabetic, 
he can have worsening of any disease he is suffering from because most of the things will ultimately invite infection and the diabetes is one thing which precipitates infection very fast. I will, I am reminded of one message of William Osler. William Osler was a, he has said to be the world's best bedside technician. He said, if you want to live long, contract a disease, chronic disease like diabetes. The reason is because if you are diabetic and you are a really conscientious person, you will control your diet, you will control your weight, you will do better exercises and therefore you live longer. So therefore diabetics should not become disheartened. They must, must understand, change your lifestyle and live a full blooming life and enjoy life.